and my oh my do I have a heap of new things in the pipeline. However, in this video I have with me the latest GTL smartphone, the GTL Infinity 10. Let's give it a look. In terms of design, we have very minor visual changes. I mean, you'd be forgiven to say it's the same design, but again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a little bit bigger than the Infinity 9, a 6.7 inch display from the 6.5 inch on the Infinity 9, and it's also sharper at Full HD Plus with a punch hole versus just HD Plus and a notch on the one from last year. We have a 6,000 milliampere hour battery here versus 5,000 on its predecessor, and we finally graduate to a USB-C port now. Welcome to the party, GTEL. The rest is still pretty familiar. Fingerprint scanner is on the back. Triple slot SIM tray for two SIMs and a memory card. A triple camera setup with some interesting improvements. Uh, some clean software, but with Android 11. Really, if you have an Infinity 9, you won't really feel like you're missing out on much. That is until you play around with the Infinity 10. The IPS panel on the Infinity 9 was pretty much one of the good ones on the market for the asking price, and the Infinity 10 does one better on both size and sharpness. At Full HD+, Plus, the content on it looks sharper. It's just a more pleasing display compared to the one on the Infinity 9, but not by much. Most might not notice. Same goes for performance. The Infinity 10 again gets minor spec bumps. We have 4 gigs of RAM now and 128 gigs of internal storage. That's 1 gig more RAM and 64 gigs more internal storage than the Infinity 9. Small gains, but it's optimized reasonably well enough that in the short time that I have been playing around with it, it's been performing smoothly. I mean, of course, this will not be a hardcore gaming machine, neither will it be a performance or productivity tool, but the day-to-day -day tasks it can handle very well, especially if your day-to-day -day includes a long-lasting battery. Jittle's power management on this phone is absolute witchcraft. In our battery test, an hour each of gaming, video streaming, and video recording, the Jittle Infinity 10 only lost 19% of its power. It completely desecrated the Technopova 5G's record by a whole 10%. As much as these two have the same battery, I think the Techno shows just how much juice you lose with a larger display. The 240Hz touch sampling rate, the 120Hz refresh rate, plus a powerful gaming grade processor. And not forgetting the 5G modem. All of which the Infinity 10 happily does without because GTL is not out here trying to make a gaming smartphone. Most of their clients are civil servants and they won't give a thought to anything beyond what GTL is offering because what they're getting is enough. So yes, the choices GTL made when selecting what bits to add onto the Infinity 9 and the Infinity 10 have made it the battery life champion by quite the margin. I mean, I don't think a normal looking phone can dethrone it anytime soon, but the year is still young. The camera situation has a few changes as well. According to GTEL, the camera system is a 48 megapixel main lens, a two megapixel two times telephoto lens, and a five megapixel wide angle. But that's what the box says and not what I actually am seeing on the ground. And this, small bit is gonna be a little bit technical. The main and the two times telephoto cameras are taking 48 megapixel images, even though the zoom lens is said to just be two megapixels. But if I use dev info, what the Android system is reporting to the app lines up with what the box says. The only conflict is on the actual imaging image files that these cameras generate. I have no explanation for this right now, but I mean, this is, this is interesting. This is the first time that I have seen a smartphone company downplaying the specs of their phone. From what I am seeing, the GTEL has a 48 megapixel camera on the main lens and the telephoto lens and a five megapixel ultra wide. I mean, it's a pleasant surprise. Also, fun fact, the camera app on the GTEL will close if it goes unattended for an extended period of time, which looks like it's two minutes. Other camera apps just disable the camera and will ask you to either tap once or to do a double tap to reactivate the camera, which again is 
a little bit interesting. Anyway, this is how the camera system actually performs. It's similar to the Infinity 9. Very usable pictures with rich color, good dynamic range and sharpness. The photos look pretty nice, but I did feel like the focal distance on the main camera was a bit too far. I find myself needing to position the camera further away from the subject than what I would have liked, and it robbed me of that dramatic effect when I try to get close to a subject that I'm taking a photo of. Also, shout out to GTL for having a pro mode in the camera options. At least this one does not limit my creativity. Apart from that slight setback with minimum focus distance, it's an all-round solid camera setup. I like it. As has been the theme of the GTL Infinity 10, it's just some minor changes here and there, and generally majority of the bits both externally and internally have grown a little bit bigger. Battery, display, memory, storage, and camera got subtle improvements, which is great, but the price increase from the Infinity 9 to the Infinity 10 is nowhere near subtle. From 150 US dollars to 220 US dollars, that's a 70 US dollar jump, and it just feels like it's a bit too much in my opinion looking at the marginal improvements. I mean, yes, the battery life on this thing can probably make it an easy four day smartphone before you need to charge it, but is that worth 70 bucks? Also, not forgetting that at 220 bucks, you're starting to see options like the Technopova 2 with a bigger display, a bigger battery, and a more powerful processor, and 50% more RAM, or the Technocamon 18, with a more versatile camera system. The GTL Infinity 10 is a good general purpose phone. It will do the day-to-day -day stuff with zero frustrations, but the price tag. It places the GTL among some very tough competition. That makes it seem like it's not providing the best value for that price point. But then again, if you're getting it on credit, then probably it won't hurt as much. Thanks for watching.